Treasury has now started in the last few quarters to issue the ratio of short-term bills to longer-term debt in a way that is different from their standard uh, guidelines in the past that essentially say that not more than between 50 to 20 percent of the total stock of debt should be short-term. And they are issuing more short-term bills, less longer-term uh, or longer-duration uh, bonds. And effectively, if you think about it, this is a form of backdoor quantitative easing because you're reducing the supply of long-term treasuries while increasing the supply of shorter ones. And by reducing the supply, given the demand, they're pushing the price of 10-year treasury and other long-term treasury higher and the yield lower. So it's effectively a backdoor form of quantitative easing the way that the Fed was doing when they were actively purchasing long-term bonds as a way of reducing the yield. Now, we know that the Fed is trying to tighten monetary policy until recently in order to cool off the economy, slow down growth, and push inflation towards its 2% target. Now, this activist uh, treasury issuance becomes effectively a way for treasury to undo what the Fed has done. And our empirical estimates suggest that the amount of uh, this active unconventional uh, fiscal policy is equivalent to the Fed having cut policy rates, the Fed funds rates, by about uh, 100 basis points. And we believe that the fact that uh, growth has remained above potential and inflation has remained sticky rather than moving faster towards 2% is due to the fact that Treasury has effectively interfered with what uh, the Fed has done and has tried to undo the impact of the Fed tightening because they want to maintain financial conditions easier than otherwise to stimulate growth uh, during this uh, part of the business cycle. To explain uh, how this works is as follows. Think about what uh, happens when the Fed does quantitative easing. There is a demand and there is a supply for treasuries. When there is more demand, the price goes higher and the yield falls. There is an inverse relation within the price of the bond and the yield. And when the supply increases, of course, uh, more supply, and therefore you need a lower price and a higher yield. So when the Fed does quantitative easing, it's trying to ease financial conditions by reducing long rates and by reducing the long rates on treasury, the mortgage rates and other market rates that are related to the 10-year treasury are reduced as well because there is spread relative to treasuries. So you're demanding more bonds, you're increasing the price, you're reducing the yield. That's what you do. That's quantitative easing. Suppose that you are instead the treasury. You have to issue debt to finance uh, your deficit. You can issue short-term debt or you can issue longer-term debt. If you decide to issue longer-term debt, less of it, you reduce the supply of uh, longer duration treasuries compared to the demand. And when the supply is reduced, given demand, the price is gonna be higher and the yield is gonna be lower. So QE done by the Fed is acting on the demand for treasury by the Fed, while QE done through the back door by the treasury is working by reducing the supply. Doesn't matter whether you increase the demand or you reduce the supply, the price is higher, the yield is lower. So that's the way you should think about what the treasury is doing right now is a backdoor form of quantitative easing. So the Fed is trying to push the Fed funds right now to five and a half. So it's effectively as if the effective Fed funds rate today is not five and a half, but four and a half. In our view, that's one of the reasons why the economy has been until recently in the no landing scenario where growth is about potential and inflation has remained more sticky than was originally forecast and predicted by the Fed. In estimating the impact of ATI on 10-year treasuries, we took studies and there's a broad range of literature estimating what are the impact of quantitative easing. And uh, in the literature on quantitative easing, it was shown that 
about 800 billion to a trillion of QE is equivalent to 25 basis points reduction in 10-year treasury or equivalently 100 basis points reduction in the policy rate, the Fed funds rate. So uh, we don't have other episodes of uh, this ATI is unusual unless you go to, you know, uh, other very far historical examples. So the way we thought about it was QE has this impact and ATI effectively by reducing the supply of long duration as opposed to increasing the demand has an impact the way it was described by affecting interest rate risk on long bond yields, 25 basis points and 100 basis points on the short end of the yield curve. So they are effectively equivalent. There are really small nuances that are very technical, but uh, substantially is the same story. Now, in terms of where the economy would be, a year ago, of course, people, when the Fed was hiking, were worried that we'll have a hard landing. Then people said, well, we got lucky that there are a bunch of positive aggregate supply shock. Maybe we'll have a softish landing. And until six months ago, I would say it looked like inflation was dropping like a stone last year and growth was above potential. We're on the way to a soft landing. That is exactly what the Fed wants and what Treasury wants. However, in the last, uh, in the first three months of the year, what happened was that inflation ticked up and growth uh, was still robust, maybe less robust than last year, but robust. So people started to worry about uh, a kind of a no landing zone, that growth was too strong last year, that inflation was falling, but core inflation was remaining above 3% as opposed to falling towards two. And the question was, hey, the Fed hike rates all the way from zero to five and a half. People were worrying about a hard landing or a short and shallow recession. We would not even get that. We were in a low landing zone. So what can that explain it? And um, maybe some of it was luck and positive supply shock. But in our paper, we argue that part of that story is instead uh, activist treasury issuance that essentially is financial condition, maintain financial condition both on the short end and the long end of the yield curve easier than otherwise. It stimulated also the price of other assets, including, for example, corporate bonds or real estate related assets. And therefore, part of the reason why the Fed was unable to achieve the soft landing and we're in the no landing zone was uh, these activist treasury issuance. Now you're asking me, what if they have not done that? Then I would say that the economy probably would have slowed down much more. Inflation would have moved fast, there was 2%. And we don't know whether that would have caused an actual short and shallow recession, a softish landing, or a real just uh, soft landing. But certainly, probably Treasury was worried that what the Fed was doing might have been an overkill. They knew that this year would be an election year. They knew that the results of the election depend in part on whether you can avoid a recession or not. And to be on the safe side, that's our takeaway. They wanted to, to undo part of the tightening of the Fed. And that's where the activist uh, treasury issuance policy came into effect. So I cannot say that it would have been a recession. But certainly, and economic growth would have slowed down more according to what the Fed was desiring to do. That goal. certainly would have been. And we could have been even at the risk of maybe a short and shallow recession. Possibly. Possibly. We don't know, of course.